Hey guys, welcome to my channel Raw Japan, Raw Retro. So, um, I put a double sided tape uh, magnet sheet around my camera and I attached it uh, to the window, the front window via a suction cup. So, let me just adjust it a bit more. It's kind of in a weird angle here. Straighten it a bit. Okay, this looks straight, and let's just move it not too much down, just a bit like this. Should be good. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do a short drive, which I'm gonna cut probably later on. And uh, first we are gonna go fill up the car. day today here in Saitama Japan but uh, it's relatively nice outside it's about uh, 16 to 18 degrees Celsius and it's a national holiday today expensive when it comes to uh, checking your vehicle especially if you have a, have a white plate car because car are the taxation here works uh, 
depending on the size and the weight of the car. And that's why uh, K cars or K Gidosha, like the one driving right in front of me here with the yellow number plate, they are actually pretty cheap to run. Well, pretty cheap compared to uh, what a white plate car would cost here. I mean, even a uh, K car like this one there, the Suzuki there, you'd probably pay like, uh, I don't know, 40, 40,000 yen for uh, two years. And uh, in my case, I'm paying exactly, I have the bill right here somewhere, where is it? Anyway, I'm paying like 92,000 yen for two years. And that's basically just a basic check that doesn't include parts or anything. But uh, I usually take good care of the car. Let me check here, yeah, 91,518 yen to be precise. And there's just a small label here included. Like they have to change the uh, rear number plate uh, bulbs because they are LED lights and this is not allowed. You have to have normal lights. And the uh, front, uh, what do you call it? The uh, position lights, the small lights, or the stationary lights, whatever. They are also LED lights and you have to insert just normal bulbs, so it's probably something I can do by myself. And if I do this I can shave off maybe like, uh, I don't know, 3-4 thousand yen of the bill. So I'm gonna go to Mega Donkey today and uh, just buy some regular bulbs. And uh, remove the LEDs. I just leave the normal bulbs in there. I mean, I don't care if I have LEDs or whatever. So actually, I never realized uh, when I came to Japan uh, as a tourist back in the 90s or the 2000s, and I always was. Uh, Amazed at all these tuned cars all around me, RX-7, Skylines, GTRs, Evos, Subarus, uh, whatever you have, Silvias. Of the crazy body kits and wings, and I always thought like, oh my god, Japan is so cool, they can just put all this stuff on their cars and uh, have no problem. But actually, I think it's even stricter here than it is in uh, Luxembourg. I think in Luxembourg you could probably put LED lights on your number plate lights and uh, get away with it. But uh, here you can't. I don't know if the law changed in the meantime. Maybe back then in the days it was uh, different, but uh, I don't know. So let's go to Mega Donkey, buy some cheap bulbs and just replace all the bulbs and I'm gonna shave off how much do they ask? Uh, what's this? Headlight lens. Front to small. Uh, yeah, 2200 yen. Just for removing the three screws and replacing the bulb. Let's first go to the uh, gas lines there, gas station, petrol station, whatever you call it. I'm thinking to have lunch, late lunch again. It's now 2.30. up at uh, 
6 this morning, had breakfast, and then went back to sleep again. I actually watched a, a live stream of a friend of mine here in Japan. And uh, she's live streaming, uh, not retro, but uh, she's a huge fan of uh, Bloodborne and um, World War Z. And what else is she playing? Overwatch. So I'm gonna put, put the link uh, to her YouTube channel if you guys enjoy watching Bloodborne, Bloodborne live streams or World War Z. I was actually playing with her back in the days, but recently we can't find a common time spot to play together, which is a shame. And uh, her YouTube channel is has a Japanese name, I can't remember the name, but I'm gonna put a link in the description after. She's really a uh, crazy gamer, <laughs> she's just playing non-stop and uh, yeah here we are, let's fill up the car real quick So, uh, yeah, see you guys later when I'm done filling up the car. So, I'm gonna stop recording for a moment here. So, catch you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys, so we're back. Actually, the uh, double side tape magnet sheet didn't hold for very long. So, I couldn't record uh, the rest of my drive to uh, Kornos Station. So I'm gonna show you guys today uh, one of my, well, no, not really, an izakaya. I was about to say one of my favorite, but uh, pretty much every izakaya is uh, awesome in Japan, so let's say one of many izakayas in Japan. And this one is uh, specialized in uh, yakitori, and yakitori is uh, how do you say this? Chicken, chicken chunks of chicken on a grilled chicken chunks on stick in various uh, forms and uh, whatever you're gonna see when we arrive there. And it's now uh, just a couple of minutes past 3 p.m., which is an unusual time to go to an izakaya in Japan. But. Uh, Let's go anyway. So you can see the surroundings here, how it looks like. And over there is the station. They have some really weird wending machine here. So pretty much you put in uh, 1,000 yen and uh, you can get like a mystery prize. I have no idea how this works. I never saw anything like this. And you can see the, the machine is all rusty all over the place. Looks pretty worn down. Probably get a number ticket and then you scan these barcodes. QR code and I have no idea. Okay, so we're in this uh, small side street now. And some weird job over there. What is this actually? We import it directly from the Brazilian mine. Wow, really?
And we're gonna go to this place there, the yellow sign, Tori Kizoku. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's 3 o'clock, it's pretty early to go to Nezakaya, but here you get an idea. Let me just change to first person view. You get an idea how it looks like. Okay. So, uh, let me just move the camera a bit up, up, here we go. Okay guys, so uh, let me just connect, turn off the camera for a moment and connect the phone so I can see better what I'm filming. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if I recorded this, but uh, basically here's the menu card. And you have uh, the drinks here, like wine, non-alcohol drinks, kids drinks, soft drinks, cocktails, uh, whiskey, wine, beer, too high, whatever you want. So let me just put the camera right here and I should be connected now. So the first thing you do when you come to Japan, you uh, wipe your hands using the shibori. I already opened one here. Right, and uh, so um, let me see if I can change it to English for you guys. We go to the top, we are at the top. Maybe here is English. So you can change it to English. So, um, let me see. Mm. Spicy fried chicken. Okay, uh, it's kind of weird. The Japanese menu looks kind of different. Okay, so uh, yeah, here is the chicken stuff. Have like quick access buttons here. Various things. So let's start off with a uh, Speed menu. So here you have like small salads. We're gonna order some uh, eggs. And uh, let's go back to Yakitori. 
More like uh, the chicken skin ones. Lovely chicken skin. This is a pork. Okay, so let's start out with this here. And if it's okay, and all the sense. Yeah, that means they are preparing. Okay, guys, so um, I'm gonna stop recording now for a minute and I'm gonna just film, uh, record whatever comes to the table. Okay, so see you guys later. <laughs> Okay guys, I'm done. I am full. I probably won't need a dinner today. So uh, I had... Um, let me check. I had uh, two drinks. And I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plates. And it cost me 3,597 yen. And I have to say I overdid it a little bit. But uh, yeah. So let's confirm payment. Okay, so we're done.